guys, here we are. The exciting part, well, another exciting part, is polycrylic on the table base. Um, I am so excited because this means we are one step closer to being done with our first project. Um, this is the polycrylic. Like the polyurethane, it does show up to be a little milky looking, um, but the instructions say it will dry crystal clear, so we will see. It says to use a, um, a good synthetic brush. I'm hoping that this is good enough uh, for this, and to paint with the wood grain and to not overpaint. So let's start. I'm going to start from one base to the other. And also, um, the finish on this is also satin. The paint itself, the finish is satin. So it shouldn't be that much different than what it already looks like. One thing that I'm not sure if I mentioned to you guys, but make sure, and this is something that I googled because I wanted to make sure that I didn't completely screw it up, but make sure that um, your primer is the same as your paint. So if you have oil-based paint that you want to use, make sure your primer is also oil-based. Um, if you have latex, um, make sure that your your paint is latex, or your primer is latex. I just learned this in the store the other day that all sample paints are latex. It says to use a thin coat. I don't believe I'm doing a very good job at not over brushing. <laughs> I did put one coat on the uh, a stain on the leaves and I have them outside drying. And I'm not going to show those to you guys because um, it's the same process as the top of the table, uh, pre-stained conditioner and um, and the stain. I'm starting to think this brush may not be that great for this project. And thinking about using the foam brush. Only because the spaces that the brush is starting to get is starting to affect the, uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to use a, a, uh, foam brush, fresh clean one, bought from the store two days ago. If I can use it on the poly, oh yeah, this is so much better. If I can use it on the polyurethane, why not, right? So I'm trying to do both sides before it dries. you can see 
decided to just use the edge of the uh, foam brush instead of going back and forth on this side between the foam brush and the regular brush. Hey you guys, um, I'm just finishing up sanding the polycrylic off of here. Um, I put one coat on earlier today. It's been two hours since uh, and I'm just sanding it and prepping it for the second coat. Um, it is hard to see when um, you are sanding, so be careful that you don't sand too much in one spot. You don't want to rub it off completely in one spot and then have it thicker in another spot. I believe that will look a little silly. get all of the dust off. You don't want to get any dust trapped in um, the new coat of polycrylic. Now I am going to start with these spindles this time. First time I started here, this time I'm going to start with the spindles because they take the most time. They're very tedious. And I started out before using a brush um, in between here, but I realized that if you just put the edge of, you'll see that the foam brush actually has a little tip. So if you just put the tip in um, to the crevice and just work around, um, you can get in, in there. Uh, the same. Now what I did notice also is that this brush tends to leave more uh, little bubbles. So they should settle and go away, but if they don't, if you've moved on to the next um, spindle and, and uh, notice that some is still there. You can always take a, 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 a brush, a synthetic brush, and go over the spot, the bubble, very lightly, and it should go away. table, you've refinished a table before and you have um, any suggestions, shortcuts, any helpful tips, um, you know, feel free to let us know. This is, like I said, this is my first time doing this and just from what I have found online, um, this is how I know to do it. So whatever you have, feel free to share with us. Now I chose not to paint this bottom one just yet um, because as you can see I am sitting on the floor so and I'm sitting fairly close to my base and my knees are hitting it so I don't want to paint it and then hit it and get it all, all over my clothes and rub it off so I'll do it last. Okay guys, um, 
I am finishing up the third and final coat of the polycrylic um, on the table base and then I'm going to uh, put the second coat on, um, I don't know, I'm not really sure what you call it, but the little lip on the bottom of the um, tabletop. Um, I've already put the first coat and I've sanded it and it's ready for the second coat. So, um, also I have put down three coats of the stain on the leaves and I have put the first coat of the polyurethane um, and it is ready to get the second coat as well. I'm just finishing up the third coat on the base. I have to tell you, doing this table has really taught me about patience because um, it requires a lot of waiting. You know, you have to apply your stain, then you have to wait a few hours for it to dry, and then you apply another coat um, depending on how, how dark you want it, depends on how many coats you put on it, um, which also determines how long you wait. Um, so this is definitely not, um, you know, a one day project. It's going to be a couple of days, especially with this, if you're just staining the whole thing. Well, if you're painting too, because the polycrylic requires 24 hours, uh, of drying time in between, in between the um, application of the first coat and the last uh, paint coat. I'm starting to get a little bit worried because I still have two more coats to put on the, um, I'm just going to call it the lip of the table, which is that little, um, little piece of wood that just comes straight down underneath the tabletop. Um, I still have two coats to put on and I was getting worried that I wasn't going to have enough of the polycrylic because I only got a half a pint. Um, but now I think I'll be fine. And just because you know you, when you reach this point you're coming to the end of the road, you know, your journey you've reached your destination <laughs> or going to reach your destination just because you're getting close to being done. Don't get too sloppy um, with your applications. You don't want to have, like I said, if you're using a foam brush, if you're pressing too hard, you will get bubbles. You don't want to have bubbles in your finished product. And I am only telling you this because I'm noticing that I have made some of these mistakes during this process. I have noticed for me that it's a little bit easier if you're painting from the, on the bottom to paint upward because then your brush is not slapping against the floor and collecting all that dust that's on your um, plastic. Okay guys, well I'm going to continue working here and the next time that you'll see this table will be put together and completely done. Alright, well um, 
thanks guys for learning with me and I'll see you next time.